Okay, welcome back. Like I said in the last video, we're going to move a little bit quicker here, uh, just that for the sake of not uh, risking this tutorial getting a little bit too tedious and boring. So uh, let's just move along here. Let's open up the material manager again. We can see here's our wooden fence material. What we need is new material. We're going to move on to texturing or, or shading the rock. So we can see we have several rocks here. What we're going to do is create a brand new material for that. So let's go to materials, create new material. Let's double click on the Fong material node here or uh, the Fong material to change the name. We want to change this to something else. So something very original would be rock mat. That's pretty original. Okay, so we have again the same situation. Very bland, very boring gray Fong shader doing absolutely nothing. So let's go ahead and change that. Let's go over here to nodes, go to texture, image, and what we want to do is plug this image node into the diffuse port of the Fong node. This is going to be our texture. Now let's double click on the image node. What we want to do is bring in a new image. And the image we want to look for is rock color PSD. So it's a PSD which uh, it's pretty big, but that's okay. So here's our, our rock image, our rock texture which is painted outside of XSI. Let's hit F6 to go ahead and refresh that. So we have a rock texture image and it's going into the diffuse port of the Fong, but that's still not good enough. We need to go ahead and make this look, uh, look a lot better. But next thing we're going to do actually is apply this rock material to the actual rocks in our scene so we can start to do some render previews and see what's going on here. So Let's hit 8 on the keyboard to open up the Explorer and you'll see that the rocks are numbered and named uh, in a very organized fashion. I recommend that you organize yourself in your exercise scenes. Very important. So I'm going to click on rock 1, hold down shift and then left click on rock 8 so I can select all the rocks. Now with all the rocks selected I can right click on the rock material in the material manager and click on assign to selection. So now all the rocks in my scene have the rock material assigned to them. I'm going to pick this rock over here and hit F on the keyboard to go ahead and, and zoom into him, into that rock. I'm going to move this up and out of the way here. Okay, so here we can see our rock. So let's go ahead and do a render region of this. So there's our rock. It um, looks more interesting than before, obviously, but still doesn't look too great. It's kind of blown out. It's kind of shiny. Uh, we don't want it to look shiny like, like if it just rained or anything. So let's go over here to the Fong node and let's turn Specular off. And that'll help to get rid of that specularity, some of that specularity. But we also have to make some other changes to this. For example, we have to use ambient occlusion to darken that up and make it look more realistic. So let's go ahead and let's do that. Let's go to nodes, illumination, go down and grab an ambient occlusion node. We're going to need also a mixer node here. This kind of feels like cooking in the kitchen or something. I'm not a good cook myself, believe me. Uh, let's go to mix two colors. So we'll get a mixer node just like we did before. And we'll plug the Fong into the base color and plug the ambient occlusion into the color one. Now we're going to leave the parameters of the ambient occlusion at default. They're perfectly fine. Let's go ahead and open up the property page of the mixer node. Let's change the weight to pure white and change the mix mode to multiply. That should do it. And now finally let's plug in the mixer node into the surface shadow and photon ports of the material node. Just hold down shift while you do that so you can keep the sub menu open. Okay so there we are. Now Let's go ahead and do a quick uh, render region of this, just to see how it's looking now. Okay, so this area is darkened up uh, pretty good, which uh, which I like. I really like that. So it's looking darker, it's looking nicer. Let's make uh, just another change here to add a little bit more depth and realism to that rock. Let's add a bump node. So let's go down to nodes, go to bump, bump map generator. Let's plug that bump map generator into the bump map slot of this material node here. And for the image, we can actually 
this is one one instance where we can reuse the same uh, color image here for the texture all you have to do is take this blue icon just drag and drop it to the bump map generator and replace the old uh, default image in the input slot so there we go hit F6 to clean that up and there's our bump map generator now again we want to change the settings of the bump map generator to a negative value so it interprets everything a little bit more correctly also instead of going with negative 2 like what we did with the wooden fence pole I'm gonna leave it at negative 5 because I want the bump effect to be pretty strong on the rock because I want the rock to look lumpy and well look more like a rock so there we go now we can see the rock has these little bumps and things uh, that are that are being displayed because of the actual image so that looks a lot better you can see it looks a lot more realistic you can see we have these bumps and crevices and little areas where the, where the rock is sticking out and areas where the rock is dented in uh, just the natural occurrence of how rocks look in the real world okay so that looks great we're actually done with the rock material so let's set up the next material okay so let's see what we have to go ahead and texture next what we're gonna go ahead and work on next is the tin can so let's select the tin can hit F to frame in on the tin can so there's our old beat up tin can somebody uh, some farmer I guess or well actually I don't see why there would be a farmer out in the desert I don't know who but somebody uh, eventually dropped this tin can here a long time ago it's been here it's beat up it's been weathered and aged for who knows how long okay so now what we have to do is apply the material for this tin can or create the material I should say so let's go to materials let's go to create a uh, new material okay now let's rename this material from Fong to something else that's more appropriate say tin can that's more appropriate and I'm not going to use a Fong for this one so I'm going to select the Fong node and I'm going to hit the lead on the keyboard to get rid of it now you see the preview turns invisible that's because there's nothing defining the surface of this material therefore it's basically not going to render. So let's go to nodes, let's go to illumination, let's pick up a blend, a blend node. I'm going to plug this blend into the surface, shadow, and photon ports of that material. Now we can see we have something rendering again, which is perfect. Okay. So, what setting changes do we do to this blend? Well, we're not really going to mess with any of these settings here. What we're going to end up doing is changing some of the other, we're going to change the settings using images. So we're going to use texture maps to control the way that this blend looks. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and pull up a texture to use for this blend. So let's go to nodes, let's go to texture, and let's click on image. And now we can plug in a texture into this, uh, into this image. Now, let's double click on image here click on new new from file and the image that we want to look for is the one called tin can underscore color and it's a JPEG so tin can here it is color JPEG let's open that up and you can see the preview here the texture it's a very old metallic rusted looking texture again these are created in Photoshop let's go ahead and take this image node and plug it into the blend node here and we want to plug it into the diffuse slot so now you can see our preview here shows the texture very nice let's hit F6 to clean this up okay now what we want to do is plug in one more texture map to this blend node if I go ahead and pull up a preview of this shader ball and the way that I did that is simply by clicking on this little blue V icon and it brings up this little shader ball preview we can see that there's some specularity here on this shader. I want there to be some specularity, but not a lot. And I also want to control where the specularity is, because right now the specularity is very uniform, meaning that the specularity is even across the whole object. In real life, realistically, that wouldn't happen. So I need to be able to control that. And the way we can control that is using a texture map. And we would plug the texture map into the specular uh, parameter, of this blend shader. So to do that it's pretty simple. Let's go to nodes, 
pull up a texture image node again. We're going to plug this into the blend's specular parameter right here. And if you double click on the blend, you'll notice that now the specular parameter has a question mark and the little connection icon is highlighted in red. That's to tell us that there's something plugged into that parameter. In this case, it's an image node. If we bring up the shader ball preview, now we can see something interesting is happening. This default image is controlling the way that the specularity looks on this material. So what we're going to do is double click on this image node, go to new from file, and we're going to plug in a an image which is basically a specular map which is uh, used to control the specularity of well this material so specular map that we're looking for is going to be called tin can underscore specular it's a JPEG so let's open that up and here it is it's basically a black and white uh, image a grayscale image and the way this works is pretty simple the lighter the area is the more specularity there's going to be in that area the darker it is, the less specularity it is. If it's pure black, there's going to be no specularity in that area, meaning there's going to be no shine to that area. In this case, we can see the areas that are heavily rusted and worn out are black or very, very dark gray, meaning that those areas are not going to be very shiny because realistically, the rusty areas wouldn't look shiny on the real tin can. However, the areas where there's still some of the paint left, uh, where some of the tin can still looks not new but it's not too rusted is going to have some specularity in this case about a medium specularity because it's about a medium gray if there was any areas on this image that were pure white those areas would be very high in specularity or very bright with specular highlights so let's hit F6 to clean that up let's look at our render ball preview here now we can see that the areas where there's rust um, are not specular pretty much at all. Areas where there's not rust, where it's uh, gray and cleaner, have some specularity. And that actually adds more detail and makes our material look much better when it gets rendered out. Okay? So let's go ahead and let's apply this material to our tin can. So another way that we can apply this is simply by left clicking and dragging that material on top of the object itself. So let's zoom into this object a little bit here. Do a render region to see how it's looking. Okay, so there's our tin can. Looks rusted. Specular map is working pretty nicely. The rusted areas are not uh, very bright. Don't have uh, specularity, which is great. Okay, but we're still not done. We still have to increase the size of this shader network and make it a little bit more complex. Okay, so to do that, Again, we're going to use ambient occlusion to darken this up and make it look more realistic. So let's go to nodes, illumination, grab ourselves an ambient occlusion node. Then we're going to go back to nodes and grab ourselves a mix two colors node like we've done in the past a few times already. Let's plug the, bit, the blend shader into the base color of the mixer node and we'll take the ambient occlusion and plug it into the color slot of that mixer node. Now for the ambient occlusion, we're going to leave the settings at default. We don't need, really need to change them, so we're not even going to bother opening up its property page. Now, the Mix to Colors node, uh, what we're going to do is open that one up. We're going to increase the weight color to pure white, and again, switch the mode to multiply. Okay, and that, uh, that'll make this look a lot better. So let's do a render region. We can see it still looks the same as before. The reason for that is this isn't connected correctly. If we see, I never connected the mix to colors node to the material node, so you want to be careful about that. Sometimes you can forget. So let's go over here and replace the surface, shadow, and photon ports with the mix to colors node. And now let's do a render region. And this should look drastically different. And it does. Now it looks darker, looks a little bit more detailed. Um, downright it just looks a, a whole lot better than it did before you can see these darkened areas this looks great uh, you can see some of the metallic areas that are still not rusted are kind of shiny with specularity but then you have these rusted areas that have no specularity and they help to bring out the um, the effect of this being an old weathered rusted damaged tin can uh, tin can okay great we still have some more work to do though 
with uh, with this specific shader network. What I'm going to do is do the same thing that I did with the wooden fence pole. I'm going to pull in another mixer node, and this first mixer node is going to connect into the base color. And then what we're going to do is we're going to plug in a cavity map that I made for this tin can into this mixer node here. So let's go to nodes, texture. Let's pull up an image. You can see things start to get a little bit complex here. Starting to get a lot of nodes uh, plugging into this thing. We're going to take this image and we're going to plug it into the color one. Open up this image node. Go to new from file. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go to tin can and we're going to pull up the tin can cavity map or cav map for short. And we can see here the cavity map. The white areas again don't get affected too much. Now these darker areas will be more affected. So let's close that. Let's hit F6 to organize this or clean it up. Oh, this is good that I did this. I made a little mistake here. And actually it's very good that I did this. Now the reason that my nodes disappeared is because I, uh, I didn't plug the new mixer node into the shader network. The only stuff that's plugged in is what you see here. So if you create a new node, say I go here and create a new image node here with an image, notice how this one is by itself. It's not connected to my entire shader network. If it's not connected to the whole network and you hit F6 to refresh, it's going to get rid of anything that's not connected to the network in order to clean this up and make it more organized. You want to be careful about that because in my case I didn't pay attention to that and then I ended up losing the nodes. So now I have to go back and create the nodes again. So you can fast forward this part of the video if you don't want to see me do this again. Or you can watch me do it again. This time I'm going to plug this into the surface shadow and photon ports before I forget. I also want to pick up a texture image node here. Plug that into the color one. Let's open up the mixer node here. Switch this to pure white. And switch the mix mode to multiply. And the image we want to get is new. This time we're going to go to source because I already have it loaded up. I don't have to go to new from file. It's going to be here as a clip. See that? Tin can cav map. So I'm going to pull it up. Now I can hit F6 safely, and there we go. It didn't get rid of my nodes. It's a little bit hard to see this because there's so many nodes and they're so, uh, and they're so far away. Okay, so here's the nodes. Let me double click this to make sure. Okay, everything is set up there. Okay, everything looks like it's uh, good to go. So now let's do a render region of this and see what we have. So now the tin can looks dirtier, looks nastier, um, basically the way it's supposed to looks a lot more detailed now than what we started with as you can see this really starts to look like you could take your fingernails and start chipping away at these metallic parts where the rusted parts are it looks like the rusted areas are kind of indented in um, just like it would on a on a real old tin can just laying out in a desert somewhere uh, all rusted and nasty okay awesome now the last thing we want to do with this tin can to put the icing on the cake so to speak is we want to add a nice bump map to make it look even more detailed. So let's go to nodes. Let's go to bump. Let's grab ourselves a bump map generator. Let's plug that into the material node, into the bump map slot. And let's go ahead and go get a new from file image. And what we want to get is the tin can bump, which is this one right here. So let's open that up. Now, in terms of the, the factor, factor settings. What I'm going to do is leave it at 5 because I want the bump effect to be very strong but I'm going to switch it to negative 5 so it doesn't invert it, invert the effect. Let's hit F6 to refresh and there we go. There's our shader network for our tin can and that should do it. That should give us a nice, uh, a nice looking old rusted beat up tin can laying there in the dirt in the middle of some desert somewhere. So now let's render this out with the bump map and now, whoa, and that looks very corroded. That's a very nasty tin can. You probably don't want to drink anything out of that. Okay, so you can see the bump effect is pretty strong. It's uh, having a very strong effect, actually. And it's uh, making this look uh, very beat up, very old, very nasty. If you want, you can reduce the bump effect. To me, it's looking like the bump effect is a little bit strong. So I'm going to reduce it to maybe uh, negative 2 instead.
and the bump effect will be a little bit more subtle which I like subtle subtle can sometimes be uh, be better so there I like that bump effect I'm gonna leave it at negative two looks pretty good so there we go there's our beat up old tin can now this video has been running for for quite a little while so I'm gonna end it here and in the next one we're gonna set up um, we're gonna set up our last material or actually we have two more materials to go we'll set up those last two in the uh, in the next video so I'll see you there